for the people who don't know, LeBron is my GOAT. He's my favorite player of all time. You can call me a Bron sexual, you, whatever. Yes, I'm all that, all of the above, 100%. But um, as a Lakers fan, if I am a Lakers fan, I would want them to get rid of LeBron. LeBron's 39. You could see he, start, he starts to run out of gas towards the end of these big games and stuff. And um, he's starting to come down the other side of the hill now. You know, he was always going up, he's starting to come down now. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to a, another episode of Barbershop Break Room, episode 81. Sure. Shout out to Kobe if this is episode 81. Rest in peace. 81 point game, Kobe Bryant. Um, before we start this episode, everybody, like and subscribe all of our content on YouTube. Feel free to interact with us, comment, like on Instagram, TikTok. We always respond. Feel free to argue with us or start a dialogue. So, speaking of Kobe Bryant, let's dive mm-hmm. right into it. I'm not even going to say my Lakers because, like, if you know me, you know I'm not a Lakers fan. Like, Matt likes to say that I'm a Lakers fan, but I'm a Cavs fan. You're rooting for him. Yeah, I mean, listen, I you can't root for a player without rooting for the team. So, sure. But, like, even though I knew the Lakers were going to lose this series yesterday, I was just hoping LeBron himself didn't go outside. Like, he was on a free throw line shooting two clutch free throws towards the end of the game. And I'm like, please don't miss these. Please don't miss these. Please don't miss these. So, it's like. Was he? He, no, he made both of them. Okay. Yeah, he made both of them. But he like went five for seven, so I didn't. He, know. he was three for five, and then he made those next two. So yeah, like I mean, I'm I root for the Lakers to win because obviously if they win, he wins. But I'm a LeBron fan at the end of the day, and like I always say, even if he ends up in Utah, to call me a Mormon, bro, I'm with him. Like it don't matter. But um, yesterday, Lakers got spanked again. Well, they didn't get spanked, but they lost again to the Nuggets, which. We all predicted, right? Yeah, I think so. I think everybody did. Oh, by the way, it's only me and Jordan here, guys. Yep. Hello, me and Dante. Hi. Uh, Matt will be joining us soon, I think. Derek started his real job, so we're recording when we can. So um, we all kind of predicted the Lakers were going <laughs> to go outside, I guess you can say. But um, listen, man, the one thing we have to stop is expecting 39-year-old LeBron in year 21 to be 2016 LeBron. Like, a lot of people don't realize, 2016, that was eight years ago. That's insane. Think about that. They won that championship with the Cavs eight seasons ago. Bro, kids that got born the year that LeBron did that are now killing other kids in Fortnite. My kids don't. My kids weren't even born. Neither one of them. That shit's crazy. So, like, that LeBron... Eight seasons ago, when he was 31 to 32 years old, that dude don't exist anymore. He can't do what he did in 2016. It's just a fact. So for the unfair expectations that this dude faces is it's almost laughable at this point because people love to bring up when he lost, how he lost, who he lost to, this, that, and the other. But they're forgetting that, like, the dude's 39, bro. Like, when he came to the Lakers, I think he was 35, maybe 34. So he, he was a little getting older now. He's getting over the hill. But it's like, dog, he can't do what he did then. Like, it's just not the same player anymore. Nope. And that's why they brought in a young Anthony Davis. That's why they brought in a young D'Angelo Russell. You know, and like. Booty cheeks. I don't want to. I don't want to sit here and crap on D'Lo. D'Lo did play good when they needed him to. I mean, he had that goose egg that one game, but the one game they couldn't even win, and he had seven threes. <laughs> like, what do you expect? You know. But I want you, Jordan, to give LeBron's tenure with the Lakers a grade. I'm going to tell you year by year what happened towards the end of the year, and you give that his full tenure a grade. Okay. Okay. 2019 is when he got there. They missed the playoffs. Believe that was the year he got hurt and he didn't play like the last 20, 30 games, something like that. But 2020 bubble was champions. the bubble championship. Regardless of what anybody says, I don't care. You can call it Mickey Mouse ring, this, that, and the other. Real hoopers know that was the most even, even playing field. That was real basketball. No fans, no outside noise, no outside distractions, no getting drunk at the club, no strip club. Everybody was locked in the Jimmy same way. Jimmy Butler slinging coffee in the hallways. <laughs> right. Like this was... The same playing field. Nobody had home court advantage, nothing. So 2020 was the championship. 2021, they got bounced in the first round. I think that was to the Suns. Uh, 2022, missed the playoffs. 2023, 
swept in the Western Conference Finals by the Denver Nuggets, beat the Grizzlies in the first round, and then the Warriors in the second round. Pretty impressive. 2024, they lost in the first round to, once again, the Denver Nuggets, the former champions. And they gentlemen sweep. Yeah. So Nuggets will probably win it this year. I again. don't see anybody beating them. I mean, the um, Timberwolves match up with them pretty good. You know what I mean? I think Anthony Edwards would be guarding uh, Jamal Murray, and that's going to be a great matchup. Can't wait to see that. Yeah. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But uh, given what I just gave you, what do you think? You What grade are you giving this tenure? Um, I think without the 2020 championship, it's an F. It's bad. It's an F without that. With that, it might be like a C minus or a C. Okay. I mean, missing the playoffs and getting swept in three of the five seasons, right? Mm-hmm. That's not great. Bouncing the first round this year. So he's only made it out of the first round in two seasons out of the five. Mm-hmm. He's won the championship, though. Yeah, I think like C minus. Okay. I'm not mad at that. I give it a B minus, so we're like close. You know what I mean? I mean um, we're a whole grade apart, but <laughs> they uh they won the championship. Um, the one year they missed the playoffs, he was hurt. The other year they missed the playoffs, it was just a really bad season. I, I can't exactly remember what happened that year. Um, but then even the year they got swept in a conference finals, um, they beat a Grizzlies team that they were underdogs in. Nobody thought they were gonna beat them. Then they beat a Warriors team that they were underdogs against, nobody thought they would beat them. And then they got swept by Denver, but Denver goes on to win the championship. Granted, the Heat took them, I think, six, maybe? I think it was six. So, you know, they could have at least gotten a game, but they got swept. I give it a B- minus because, like I said, I mean, you're looking at the fact that he's 39. He got there when he was 35. Like, or 34, I'm sorry. He got there at 34, so it's like you could say he's starting to leave his prime. Some people argue he's still in his prime. But missing the playoffs twice, that's no bueno. But winning a championship, at the end of the day, he still brought a championship to L.A. Regardless of whether, whether it was the bubble, people call it a Mickey Mouse ring. I don't care about all of that. Still won a championship, so I'm going to give it a B- minus for that reason. Because they've had a lot of different players, and they've also had two different coaches. And that leads me to talk about Darvin Ham. Oh, boy. The worst of the two. That dude's a trash can. Darvin Ham is a trash can, bro. He is a terrible coach. And uh, shout out to Jose. You know, he was trolling me this morning. And uh, he was talking about like, oh, well, you know, LeBron handpicks his teams. And you guys always say he don't need a coach. Er, Hold on. Nobody ever said that. Never say he doesn't need a coach. Because as far as I'm concerned, there's only been one person who was a player and a coach. And that was Bill Russell. So being able to actually play in a game while doing rotations, knowing how many fouls somebody has, how many timeouts you have, and knowing every situation, that's impossible especially in today's game. So everybody needs a coach. But that dude, he ain't that big dog. I'm sure he'll probably be fired by 1 o'clock today. But, I mean, maybe not today. But Darvin Ham needs to be fired. But with that being said, do you think they should move on from Anthony Davis? Because let's say LeBron, mm. even outside of LeBron's standard, even LeBron's probably going to opt out of his contract. I was going to say, yeah, Wendy said – that uh, LeBron intends to opt out. He always does. When it's always an option, he always opts out because then he'll renegotiate a couple more years now because he can always get paid a little bit more money. Yeah. But I'm sure the Bronny situation. Or he goes to the Cleveland Cavaliers. So I had a question about that too. Me and I, I want to wait till Matt gets here, but we'll ask him about that. But what do you think they like? What do you think they should do with Anthony Davis? Like, you think they should just go do a complete and total reset, or do you think it's time to build around AD? If LeBron leaves, had, let's say LeBron's not there. They didn't do quite what the Suns did in terms of like just taking a loan out on their entire team, getting mm-hmm. rid of everybody to try and win now. But they did get rid of a lot of their young dudes when I think it was LeBron's second year. Mm-hmm. They got rid of you know Brandon Ingram and um, Lonzo, Kuzma, Kuzma. Lonzo, yeah, got rid of all the young dudes that they drafted. Um, I. For Anthony Davis' sake, if LeBron, let's say hypothetically he leaves, goes somewhere else. For Anthony Davis' sake, I would want the hell out. Because that team ain't winning. Hell no. Bro, that team ain't winning shit. Hell So no. why would AD want to stay? Like, he's 31, get onto a new team, try to win somewhere else. 
I mean, they could build around him, though. You know, LeBron's <sighs> contract gets off the books. They don't have a ton of money paid. AD is paid. Austin Rivers is paid. I mean, Austin Rivers. Austin Reeves is paid. You could bring in some guys, you know. Like, I think Paul George will be out there. Um, I think James Harden will be out there. I know Clay will be out there. Like, I'm, I'm just naming guys. I'm not saying any of these dudes are going to bring championship to L.A. I'm yeah. just bringing I, I up think guys. Bradley Beal. If L.A. doesn't want to go into, like, a full, like, dark time period, <laughs> they need to keep A.D. But I could definitely see them getting rid of him and just kind of, like, tanking shit, right. getting better picks, trying to build for, like, five, six years in the future. I mean, because they went through a dark time right after Kobe. Kobe yeah. retired in 2016. They had 2016 to 2019. There was some there was some dark years. There was some yeah. people you couldn't even name when you see them on the court. And then even when LeBron came his first year, he got hurt. So they didn't make the playoffs. That was a dark year. You just had LeBron to cheer for at least. Yeah. You know? No, I, I think that if I was a fan of the Lakers, I'm going to be honest, I'd want them to keep AD. So that way there's at least something exciting to watch. Mm-hmm. Would you want him to keep Braun if you're if you're a Lakers fan? Take try to take yourself out of being a LeBron fan for one second. I know that's tough. It is. It's tough. Um, I, I wouldn't want him to get rid of LeBron. I don't think. I would. As a Lakers fan, like without Braun, what they got? Right. They I got mean, AB. They got some playmakers, but like LeBron's. Floor general. Yeah. If I'm if I'm the Lakers, I would want them to get rid of LeBron. If I'm if I'm a Lakers fan, I'm gonna take out my love for LeBron. For the people who don't know, LeBron is my goat. He's my favorite player of all time. You can call me a Bron sexual. You whatever. Yes, I'm all that. All of the above. Hundred percent. But um, as a Lakers fan, if I am a Lakers fan, I would want them to get rid of LeBron. LeBron's thirty nine. You could see he start he starts to run out of gas towards the end of these big games and stuff. And um, He's starting to come down the other side of the hill now. You know, he was always going up. He's starting to come down now. Like I said, he's 39. But I just look at it like if LeBron's not on my team and we're not competing for a championship. Because even when LeBron, when LeBron is on your team, it doesn't matter who you have. You are competing for a championship. They yeah. always say, if you have LeBron, you have a chance. Absolutely. So if I'm the Lakers, if we don't have LeBron, now we get to rebuild and build around the pieces we have in peace. We get to be quiet. We get to be forgotten about. Nobody's going to expect us to be the one seed or the two seed or make it to the finals. You know what I mean? Because, like, there's always, if you have LeBron, you are a championship contender. Simple as that. Do you think LeBron's on the decline? I mean, you have to in say In terms yeah. of LeBron, yes. But, like, yes, in yes. terms of players around the league, I mean, he, in this five-game series, 27-26, 26-30-30, Almost had a triple double last night. He had two double doubles that were almost triple doubles, and then the games that he didn't have double doubles, he had nine assists, six nine assists, six rebounds, eight assists, six rebounds. Game four that they won, he had less, four assists, five rebounds. Mm -hmm. But at in a, in LeBron terms, yes, right. he's declining. But as an overall player in the NBA, he's still a very very High level player. Yeah, because in twenty six, if that was twenty sixteen, LeBron, he would have forty five last night. Yeah, and they would have won by thirty. You know what I'm saying? So like, that's why I have to say, yeah, in LeBron's terms. I mean, put it like this: LeBron was undoubtedly the number one basketball player in the world from, I don't know, two thousand three until uh, two thousand twenty three. I was about to say all the way up until probably about twenty nineteen, maybe twenty eighteen, maybe because even twenty eighteen when he took that late, uh, that Cavs team Bro, to the finals there. You know what I mean? This like, is my biggest argument before Matt gets here and we don't get off sidetracked talking bullshit. My biggest argument against Michael Jordan. You put him on that fucking Cavs team they're not going in to 2018. I know they lost in the finals. Yep. Jordan does not take them to the finals. No, absolutely Because not. we saw Jordan with decent Bulls teams that didn't have a guy named mm. Scottie Pippen on them. <laughs> Who didn't make it out of the first round and got swept by the Pistons? Yep. So, yep, I agree. Uh, he and, doesn't take that team to the to the championship. Yeah, for sure, and that's one of the things that separates it for me too. I think you know when you have a dude like LeBron, I think 
you always have a chance. I mean, with Jordan, you know, once he figured it out, they won. But, like, at the beginning, they didn't have a chance. At the beginning of LeBron's career, four years in, in 2007, they had a chance. They went to the finals. So it's like, say what Who you want. Who was the second best player on that Cavs roster? J.R. Smith? Oh, uh, man. Kevin Love, maybe? They were not a good team. Maybe Kevin Love or maybe uh, J.R. Smith. Is it, that's the year they got swept in the finals, right? Yeah, they got swept. That okay. was when uh, J.R. Smith ran away from the hoop in game one. So their roster, they had Derrick Rose. Oh, God. Uh, Amon Trumpert. George Hill. Jeff Green. Jay Crowder. Channing Fry, Rodney Hood. Kyle Korver. Kevin Love. Larry Nance. J.R. Smith. Isaiah Thomas. Dwayne Wade. Tristan Thompson. And Zizic. And they traded a good bit of those dudes at the trade deadline. Yeah, there was a lot of guys that didn't make it the whole season. Like, yeah. I don't, the D Wade wasn't there. D nah, Rose wasn't there. He got traded back to Miami. He got traded away. I think they ended up getting, um, like, Jordan Clarkson. And yeah, like Jordan Randy. Clarkson was there. Yeah, I think they ended up trading him. And, I mean, yeah, that wasn't a good team. But, Kendrick Perkins was there. Oh, my like, God. Bro. But that was the classic LeBron. As long as you have LeBron, you have a chance, you know? Yeah, that team was. To put a button on the Lakers and LeBron getting smoked by the Nuggets. And by the way, we didn't mean to make this about LeBron. Shout out to the Nuggets, man. They are an amazing team. Mike Malone is a great coach. J- uh, Jamal Murray, my Kentucky alumni. He's a dog, man. He's a killer. Team <laughs> Team Canada and the Olympics is going to have a dog. That's all I'm going to say. But um, did you see that the Lakers made a statement? I think it was last night, maybe this morning. They said they are very open to fulfilling LeBron's dream of playing with Bronny James. Hmm. They are open to that. So we'll leave that as to be determined. But I think he signs back with the Lakers nonetheless. Um, Timberwolves. You think they take Bronny? I mean, you take him in the, in the second round. Sure. I not? mean, yeah. He don't get no burn, though. The NBA is not like the NFL where a second round pick is a starter still. You know what I mean? Like That's the, what I mean. He's not going to get any burn. Yeah, but that's the thing, though. Like, I think Bron wants to go to a bad team where Bronny's going to play. I think he'll get the Lakers is a bad team. <laughs> well, they had a good roster. Bronny's not going to play over. Who's he going to play over on the eight people that played? Nine people that played last year. Half night. of them ain't going to be there no more. Yeah. Half of them ain't going to be there. D'Lo ain't going to be there next year. Jackson Hayes probably going to be there next year. Uh, Torian Prince probably going to be there next year. Max Christie probably gone. Most of those guys are probably going to be gone next season. Let's be real. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, the Suns and the Timberwolves. For some reason, I said that would go six games and the Timberwolves would win. Well, you were right about one of the two things. Yes, you guys all called Suns. Yeah, Even I really you. thought. Uh, I really, really thought that the Suns would at least have a fighting chance. Oh, they got smokes. <laughs> I mean, Bradley Beal. What the fuck were you out there doing, cardio? Cardio. Right? Out there for cardio. I have he to looks say. like Jose Calderon in the 2018 Cavs. <laughs> Non-existent. <laughs> Just not there. I have to say, though, uh, LeBron is my favorite player of all time. He will always be my favorite player of all time. But um, as far as, like, just me enjoying to watch somebody, like Kyrie has been one of my favorite players to watch ever. Still love watching Kyrie. Anthony Edwards is my favorite basketball player outside of LeBron. The fact that he calls dudes like Kevin Durant and Kawhi Leonard uh, old-ass blanks, you can use your imagination, is my favorite part. Like he said, he couldn't wait to play in the Olympics this summer so he could tell, so he can remind KD who eliminated him from the, uh, from the playoffs. That's disgusting. He got that dog in him. Imagine early showing time. up for the Olympics. Like you're like, man, season's over, whatever. In comes his little cat going, hey, motherfucker, remember when I knocked your yeah. ass out the playoffs? And he going to be chirping too. At practice, that's, if he yeah, scores on KD, now. he going to be like, you remember this? You remember yeah. me? <laughs> yeah. Um, the That's Suns, Michael Jordan's son. Oh, 100%. If I'm the Suns, you got to blow that whole thing up. Blow it all up. Get get rid of the coach. Blow it all up. The whole thing. Frank Vogel's got to go. Blow up the whole thing. For I mean, sure. Bradley Beal had nine points yesterday. Or two days ago. I apologize. Bradley Beal's been hurt a lot, so like it's hard to say. With he him. shot 13 shots in 31 minutes. Made four of them for nine points. Ah. All right. Well, One for five, three pointers. Four for 13 overall. And the Timberwolves play the Nuggets next series now. And call me a little crazy, but I do like the Timberwolves a little bit. I do. 
here's the problem: is Rudy Gobert or Cat going to be able to? You, it, Jokic is one of them players you can't stop, but are they going to be able to do enough to slow him down? I think Rudy can be in the way of Jokic. <laughs> like, cause yeah, even anybody when, could get in his way. Because even when AD had a 20 rebound game, Jokic had an 18 rebound game. Yeah. Like last night, I played the nastiest parlay last night. Two legs, simple. Jokic 15 plus rebounds, AD 15 plus re- rebounds, plus 400 odds. It hit. Yeah, nasty parlay. Me and Jeff got screwed by the Pirates last night. Oh, I had I had a great bet tonight, but um, we'll we'll talk about the T Wolves and the um, and the Nugget series next episode probably. Matt says he's on his way up, so we'll move to a little football talk for Matt. Um, I know he's not going to want to talk about the Lakers. I, that's why I wanted to get that out of the way. So, no, are those the only two series that are over now? Is the Suns and the Lakers series? Um, the Pelicans got swept last night, but ah. uh, let's be real. They didn't have their best player in Zion, and the Thunder's one seed. So, like, did we expect anything different when it's one versus eight? No. And then That's I, crazy. So, what, the Wolves play, Wolves play the Nuggets. Yep. And then Thunder will play the winner of... They'll play, um, give me a second, uh... Why am I drawing a blank on who they're going to play? Who else is in the West? Suns, Wolves, Thunder, Pelicans. There's another. Clippers, Mavs. There we go. I was forgetting so about that. So they'll play the winner of Clippers, Mavs series? Yep. Okay. That'll be. That series is tied 2 2. Yeah. I think no matter who wins, them versus the Thunder will be a great series. Oh, yeah. It's gonna be, yeah. it's going to be a good matchup. I'll probably sure. start watching basketball around then. Oh, God. All right. Keep going. So. Let's go ahead and move on to a little bit of... What's up, player? Let's move to a little bit of football. Hey, but before we move to football, I want to shout out my Seattle Mariners. All right. Shout out to them for winning 10 of the last 13 games. Let's go. And then shout out to my boy Mitch Garver. Had a nice walk-off last night to win the game. What's going on? I wanted to shout out the White Sox, too. Shout out on your sweep, guys. Andrew Vaughn walk-off home run. Shout out on the sweep. You have, what, five wins now? Six wins? Let's go. All the way over there. My bad. What's yeah. up, Matthew? Thanks for joining us, bud. Yo. Ooh. You know you got a doctor excuse to miss every episode, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're about to get on the football real quick, bro. Um, so I feel like we should talk about the Guardian cap first. It's all right, though. Yeah. I feel like we should talk about the Guardian cap. Did you see that they approved that to be used in games now? Oh, yeah. 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 Um, so I've seen a lot of people like, what is football turning into? Somebody said this isn't. Somebody said it, what? Oh, who would wear it? Yeah. I mean, listen, I, I don't mind it. It's just to protect yourself. Yeah, they just they look a little goofy with it, but like it is what it is. Like yeah. I don't know why cats are like, what is football coming to? Like, oh, did y'all not see Tua throwing up gang signs? I mean, like, it is an optional thing, but I just I don't see many people opting in to wear that. Yeah, I doubt a lot of people wear it. I can see Tua wearing it. Yeah. If you are a guy that's bro, insane quarterback about, wearing it, it's going to look so insane. They're all going to look insane, bro. Yeah, I mean, but wearing it's going to look insane. But too. I'm yeah, not even going to be able to see that. If it's like an old lineman down there wearing it, you won't see that shit as much as like, oh, hey, there's Tua rolling out to his left. I feel like that. But I feel like it probably looked crazy, too, when they went from old leather helmets to like regular helmets out of that. They're like, ah. Leather ones just look better. Like, any change you make is like... Right. So Yeah, now you're a fucking bobblehead, though. All right, so do you think, like, does it make football softer to you? Like, to you no, guys? I don't, I don't think it makes it softer. Because I saw a lot of people mad about it. Like, this so, ain't football. I would say if you're going to change the helmet to, like, be safer, then you should allow more of the, the big hits to happen without penalty. <laughs> oh, you want... <laughs> Okay. So you want some more helmet to helmet action? Well, like you made the helmet safer, so let a dude lay a dude out. That should be cool. You want to come across the field and fucking kill a receiver that's catching a hospital pass over the middle? A hospital hey, pass. Don't throw a flag. Well, he was defenseless. Now he got that big ass defense on his head right now. There you go. So listen, there is just under seventeen hundred players in the NFL. Sixteen hundred ninety six. That's what Google's telling me right now. So if I'm wrong, argue with your mom. Argue with Google, don't argue with me. 
How many players do you think will wear the Guardian cap? Let's set the over under at 50. 50 total players. I was going to say four. <laughs> you think so? You think four under? Four players. Okay, be, over under 10. There will be a ra- under. There will be a random couple kickers that wear it. And kickers, then like one or, one or two dudes that have had a concussion like bad, like Tua, maybe. Tua's wearing it. <laughs> maybe. Tua's wearing it. There might I don't be one know other dude out there that just like, will wear it. You think it's heavy? I don't think it's heavy. I think, feel like it might just like bother him a little bit. I feel bit. like it's like a kid when they put a helmet on, like they'd be like trying to fucking catch I, I don't think it's that. I don't your think it's all like that. just trying to like weigh your head the rest of the way down. <laughs> Matt, over under 10 total players in the NFL wearing the Guardian cap next year. 10 and a half. Over. Over. I'm taking the over too, bro. For some It'll reason, it'll just be a bunch of randoms. I feel you'll like see gonna... dudes on the sideline wearing it for like, no reason. They'll play a minute <laughs> of the game. Yeah, they'll get they'll get them some uh, publicity. That hey man, why did you decide to wear this? For and, sure. Yeah. And be like, yeah, I'm just trying to stay safe. Or whatever. I and would like, say well, you haven't played a snap the... in two seasons. <laughs> 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 what you staying safe from? <laughs> you know, you know who Scout might team? wear it. The uh, the kick returners might wear it because Ooh, of the there new you kickoff. Go. Yeah, because like it'll be. Just or the dudes on special teams that ball. are just running down as fast as they can. Well, they changed the kickoff, oh, yeah, so yeah, you yeah, can't right. just go running like that. What about Isaiah Pacheco? He runs angry as hell. He <laughs> might want it to be able to I lower. feel like a running back having that helmet, like, I, how much bigger is it than your regular helmet? Like, I've seen it. It's it like a looks sleeve. like fucking big as hell. It's not that a big. A running nah. back wearing that, wouldn't that, like, kind of stop your ability a little bit? To it's not shoot heavy. shoot through, like, a little gap in people? I think we need one to see what we're working with here. Can we request one? Like, let's hit up a team and see if they can send us a Guardian cap. NFLPA. Let's hit up the... Us a, yeah. uh, please send we us a Guardian this helmet. Down. We're going we're gonna to email the NFL and see if we can get a Guardian cap shipped to us so we can... Uh, and then we'll put on D-Bay's helmet and run around with it and see how it goes. Preferably a Steelers uh, Guardian's helmet. Ah. That, do, are they going to have logos on I can see that. Yeah. I think that they're just going to be like what team if they, colors. What if they like paint like, it it'll be, like the helmet? Like that's what I mean. Like just the helmet. That's what I mean. And they just pop it on. That that was what I was insinuating. Like, yeah. are they going to have the logo? Like, like the like, lines and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I don't think you can just I, drop a black cap over You can't just, it's not a sticker though. Like you can't, it's like, that thing is like cloth. It's nah, like they foam got it. and shit. They yeah. got to like paint it. Yeah. Screen print. Something. They'll figure it out. I, I don't know. I think it is just going to be. Like I think it's going to be a color. solid color. It's going to be like the main helmet color, just as the whole thing. Yeah, I think it'll be an actual. I don't like, think there will be like like the Steelers guys won't wear the Steelers logo on the side. Right. Buy a Guardian cap at Dick Sporting Goods. Can you? Yeah. How much is it? Seventy bucks. We're not buying it. NFL. No way! It's seventy hey, bucks. We are sending That's an email it? to the. We are sending an email to somebody. I don't know who. <laughs> To somebody, I don't know who, but we're getting it. This is what they're going to be like, dude. Just yeah, solid. Yeah, but that's actually just not that solid big, color. That's, It's not that big. It just looks crazy. I'm compared to when they're standing next to another dude without a helmet, without one, it's like that dude's head looks big as fuck. Right. You know what I'm saying? All right, so last time for TikTok, Jordan, over under 10 and a half players that will be wearing the Guardian cap this season. You. Under. Under 10 and a half. Yeah. Matthew. Dude. How many players in the NFL? A lot. This says 1,696. Dude, it's going to be over 100. Okay. Over under 100. <laughs> over. He said under 10. He said four, too. <laughs> yeah. Over 100, at least, bro. I'm taking the over. They all wear them in training camp. They're be like, yeah, it's not that bad. Yeah, I feel like it's not that much heavier. Maybe you get a lighter helmet than, like, you know. Like, they got to have better technology than this one. But, like, this like one these on cats a... are about to be blocking each other. They're probably just going to roll like that. For sure. Yeah, I could definitely see a lot of people wearing it. A lot, a of, line, a lot of linemen. That, a lot of linemen. You got to think, them dudes hit helmets every, every play. play. Every play. No wonder D-Bake is so stupid. <laughs> oh, my God. Bro, like, the way that's on my... hanging off of his helmet, that shit looks so stupid. It's not strapped, though. It looks stupid. They because have like we're these little. Look at uh, like the Dick Sporting Goods one. There's like a little strap on the, it like clips to the, like, to like their chin strap. Yeah, it like clips to the face mask, kinda like here and here, here and here. Hmm. I yeah, think it don't look that bad. I'm gonna be honest. It's uh, not bad, especially when you look at the dudes. Like, uh, I think I'd rather see somebody throwing gang signs up. Oh my god. <laughs> This is like when the, uh, the NBA had the new headbands that were like the bandanas in the back. 
I thought those looked so stupid, bro. <laughs> I was like, man, get regular. Bring regular headbands back, All right, please. Hold on a second, bro. Let me see what you got. This this one George Kittle's wearing look like he's in the army. <laughs> that don't look regular, right. bro. They, that must have been like the first year where they were just experimenting <laughs> with it. Oh my <laughs> god, yeah. All right, if so they let's, show up with those on that it would be sick. Let's move on to the draft real quick. So we did our live stream for the draft. Uh, Matt was watching with us from home. Um, what do we think of the draft? Winners, losers, players? Um, first off, let me ask you guys this. A specific question. I hate Matt so much. <laughs> this guy looks so insane. That don't look that bad to me. He looks insane. No, Kenny's looks worse underneath He looks that. like fucking Pablo from, a, what's it called? Oh, backyard. Uh, Baseball. Was there any draft moments this year that like... Because, like, do you guys ever get choked up when you're watching a draft? Like, NBA, NFL draft, like, a dude's, like, talking or, like, his parents are talking. Yeah, you see, like, like, an interview or something, and you're like, Oh, um, not really. I'm, like, an emotional dude, but I'm not – that don't really give me that much. I'm. Just, it's just – it's nice to see, like, dude's dreams come true. There's a couple moments where, there like, was one, I was choked up. One for me. Okay, um, go ahead. Roma Dunze, when he called his, uh, his grandpa. That, I didn't like, see lost, that. I he lost his eyesight too. in an accident or something, and he was like – now – Obviously, NIL, he already had the money to uh, get him. Right. But he called him and was like, you know, I got you. You don't have to worry about anything ever again. Like, that was, it was a cool moment. Yeah, that's dope. Did you see, like, his, uh, when his coach, um, you know how, like, they'll be in little, the little, like, confessional, like, reality TV shows, and his coach has sent a message to him, um, has sent a message to Malik Neighbors. I'm sorry. Did you see that one? Hmm. So that one was a good one for me. I'm like, damn, like, you know, give me chills a little bit. But the moment that had me like, am I about to shed a tear real quick? Mm. Was Jared Verse and Brandon Fisk. They both played together at Florida State last season, and they both got drafted to the Rams. And when he got drafted, he was like, I get to play with Verse again? And then they put him on the phone with each other. And like, dog, that little moment, I was just like. Yeah, that's sweet. Like, you know what I mean? Like college teammates getting to play together on the pros, that don't really happen that often. Like, I feel like you see it a little bit more now, but like. I thought that was pretty dope, especially since one was taken early in the draft, you know, first rounder and stuff like that. Right. So, like, you know, Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase were years apart. It was like Kobe White. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, but they didn't even get to play together. Yeah. He was just hyped. He was that just he got hyped for his boy, though. Yeah. He was like, Cam got drafted? Like, he was hyped. Like, so that was a moment for me where I was like, damn, bro, that's dope, man. Like, he gets to play with his teammate at the next level. Like, that's crazy. There, no. was, there was another one now that I'm thinking about it. Um, I can't remember his name, though. But his high school janitor... He, like, when he got to Alabama, I believe it was Alabama, he went back to his school and gave his janitor his jersey, like, game-worn jersey off the field. And he said, when I get drafted, I'm going to bring you one of those jerseys, too. So I haven't, like, seen a follow-up video, but it was cool, like, seeing that kind yeah. of the way they were well, he interacting. The and, like, That's well, he dope. said the janitor, like, the whole the time. Some yeah. Shit. yeah, he said the whole time when he was younger, like, the janitor would always, like, support him and was always at games and shit. So, That's like, dope. Yeah, it was super cool. Yeah, that definitely dope. I gave me chills. That's what's up. For real. <laughs> if you ask my wife, she'll be she cries over oh. TikToks all day long oh. of the draft, bro. She's like, "All right, I gotta get off. I gotta get off the draft TikTok." Yeah, bro. My wife can't even like watch the draft. I'll be looking over, and her eyes will just be glassy. The glossy is all hell. I'm like, "Come on, man. Like, quit." Um. So let's talk winners of the draft. You can say a player or a team. Um. I'm gonna let you guys actually go about your Steelers. Because I think you guys did very well in the draft. I mean, not that you guys do bad ever in the draft, really. So um, I'll let you guys kind of go get a couple minutes to talk about your Steelers because it looks like you guys got a lot of the needs that you uh, you were really yearning for so you can have a good season. Yearning. But, uh, yeah, you built up the offensive line, got a nice linebacker. Um, did you guys get a DB? Jordan, what's the problem, buddy? You're a little dark. Darkness, everybody. Darkness. Cat trans dark skin. Did y'all get a uh, DB? I, th I don't think we drafted one. Mm -hmm. We might have like late. I I didn't really pay attention. To yeah, we got fifth one fifth round. I know you got a guard, a center, a linebacker. You got a receiver too, right? Yeah. Yeah, Roman. Uh, not Roman Dinsey. Oh, Jesus Roman Christ. Wilson. Roman Wilson. Yeah. Well, uh, go ahead. So talk about your draft, fellas. Go go off real quick. I'll be quiet. Let me shut up. Matt, what you think? <laughs> I'm gonna go to sleep. Uh, I'm super... I was here to talk about the picks for the first round at least. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fed's coming. 
Shit, I gotta go. Come to get Dante for hating. <laughs> I, <clears throat> I'm super hype. I couldn't. The only, the only one I didn't like was Roman Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> then why didn't you like it? This cat drawer was I, pitching a he just, uh <laughs> He just doesn't move the needle for me. I uh I mean I don't know. Hopefully he does good. I mean he's on my team now. I gotta root for him. So like hopefully he is sweet. Yeah, it sucks rooting against a player right. on your team. Especially when he's such a bitch. <laughs> 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 no, it, it, it was just from like he just got sour feelings when he was talking shit about Ohio State and stuff like that. But uh no, for real, like honestly, they were like trying to show highlights and shit like that, and it was like really hard to get it was hard to get it was hard to get a gauge like in Michigan, it was hard Jersey. to get hype for sure but it was hard to get a gauge of like is how good is it dude he had like 40 catches like yeah he was you know what i'm saying a, you, you guys had games where you're throwing the ball six seven times a game like yeah is this guy sweet is is he just I, is he making plays against bowling green like i i really don't know personally i i think that he's good um i know that we've been i seen on twitter yesterday it was going crazy the steelers are in talks real close to getting another they didn't say what. They just said another key role player. Cortland I saw Sutton. Cortland Sutton. Um, Cortland Sutton, Cortland so Sutton is what I saw, too, because they said that whoever we get, he's going to have to change his number. I saw that. So that was 14. like Cortland Sutton. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't love that. for like I like that for y'all. I don't love that for us, bro. Cortland Sutton be tearing our mouths out every time <laughs> we played him. Like I swear, bro, he get off every time he plays us. No, but, but for, besides that, like I think we had an amazing draft. I couldn't ask for like – much more i think um the o-line really needed to be addressed especially for the way that we that we're gonna want to play i'm assuming how uh art wants to run the offense um, did you see our center what he tweeted no, what he, zach, zach frazier, frazier? what did he yeah. tweet he tweeted a highlight tape of him uh doing uh just pancaking the fuck out of people with a uh Motley Crue song in the background. Oh my god. <laughs> they said that's fucking Steeler football if I've ever seen it. I was going to say he fits right in yeah. already. What a No, what but a, for real, the the literal the most excited I was about a pick was uh Peyton Wilson. That dude is crazy. I hate y'all. He is he's super sweet. The only thing I've seen with him is he had that botched uh, shoulder surgery, so they said he's been dealing with that a lot. Oh, and maybe that's why we passed on him. He doesn't have an ACL in one of his knees. Oh, that's crazy. That's sweet. Um, but you can't Hans tear Ford something you don't have. Also, <laughs> didn't have an ACL in one of his knees. So can't like, tear something you don't have. Yeah. Who also Tell didn't him have one? Hines Ward. Hines Ward. Tell him about Dewan Blair. <laughs> Bro, Dewan Blair didn't have no ACLs. None. Literally none. He <laughs> couldn't touch rim either. But <laughs> no, nah, dude. How does that work? Though? Peyton I like Wilson the ACL was fucking. Like, Sideline to sideline, 4-4. Four, four. Did he hit 23 miles an hour in a game? Yeah, bro. I'm excited for him to t- to get on With the one field. ACL. Um, first, our first round pick, you know, we don't really even have to talk about him. He he literally can play anywhere. I wasn't like super excited, but it was just kind of like, it's only because yeah. it's not like a sexy pick. Yeah, it's just drafting an O-lineman in the first, in the first round, round, round is just like But it's what, it's, it's what we needed. We yeah. had to. Yeah, do you think I clapped for Jedrick Wills at 10? Yeah. I like, mean, and I thought he was going to be good. And I, I mean, I was like, like for Ooh. Broderick Jones last year, but that's because we really, really needed a lineman right. bad. Yeah. But like this year, it was like, it was a, it was a fulfillment piece. Last year, it was an absolute need. I think this year, we filled in the one spot we needed. We, we needed, like, one more lineman. So we grabbed him, maybe two, and then the the center. Yeah. So we, we knocked – I'm glad we knocked those two out first. We can get playmakers pretty much anywhere. I think anybody could step in. You can't just throw a lineman in and expect him to produce. You can throw no, you can. running backs in. You can throw receivers in, and they can kind of produce. We find receivers late all the time, I think – we should be all right. That's the only, that's the only thing about Roman Wilson that is like, okay, maybe. I mean, they know we know what we're doing with the receivers usually. Yeah, I mean, we have guys like Eli Rogers who has the, yeah great I mean, games. I mean, not a great receiver overall, but he had great games with us. And I think I think Roman Roman Wilson is going to end up kind of like one of those over the middle type guys, the yeah. safety valve type guys. He's not going to be a, a huge deep threat. It's going to be get open 
in the middle of the field, stuff like that. Yeah, I think nothing um, crazy. I think that I want him at wide receiver three over, say, Van Jefferson. He should be in the slot. Or yeah, um, we get one more guy in a trade. The trade that I've seen like the biggest uh, rumblings around a trade is us taking, I believe it's a second round pick. And Pat Fryermuth sending that for to Denver for Cortland Sutton. That's what we talked about last night. I seen that too last so, night. Yeah, D Bake said it, and then I seen it myself on Twitter. Obviously, I don't love it, but all right. It's not. <laughs> Y'all draft a big dude. Uh, what's a big dude from Georgia? Yeah, bro. He's a glorified lineman. What's his name? Darnell, Darnell Washington. Washington. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure. Have you seen him move? No, nah, I haven't. He's slow. They put weight on him so he could basically play that lineman spot. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, they could literally get Dan Moore out of there and put his dude at left tackle. He's so big. Yeah. He's, he a, just he's like, our he'll, sixth lineman. When we play he two catches tight end the sets, ball. he's our lineman. I've seen him catch the ball and like just stumble forward for a couple yards and fall. That That is but the he good looks thing so about much him. more athletic at Georgia. The good Everybody's thing about him is when he catches Everybody's, the ball, like he's so damn big, he always falls forward. That's what I mean. You he at, does fall forward, yeah. You look at when he was at Georgia, you know, we always talk about it on yeah. one college team, especially like Georgia. You got probably three, four players on defense that are NFL caliber players, first rounders right. on offense, maybe the same. That's six to ten total players. Well, when you get to the NFL, you have fifty three players yeah. that are NFL players. So you got the best of the best. So we always talk about Baker, like yeah. he can get out of the pocket, extend plays, and and run. Yeah, at Oklahoma. Those times at Oklahoma, and those times he couldn't even get out of the pocket. <laughs> yep, because everybody's faster now. Right. Um. So is it uh, unanimous that the Falcons did the worst in the first round? Are we unanimous? Yes. With that? What the fuck are they doing? Man? Um. Michael yeah, Penis. Did you guys see them uh, post? They made a post for Michael Penix, and it they're autocorrect. Put penis in like big yeah. white Yo, bold letters. Yeah. Mine does Michael the same penis. thing. I put I try to type penix and it put penis, bro. That's crazy. I mean, yeah, but to be a NFL team, an NFL social media team, like yeah. these guys know what they're doing. I'm pretty sure that like even me or Derek would have seen that, let alone <laughs> if we were working for the fucking Falcons. But yeah, that that was funny. Um, that was hilarious. Worst pick of the first round, though. Okay, so what do you think the second worst pick was? Do we think it was Brock Bowers to the Raiders? Nah, I mean, I don't love that pick, but... I, so we talked about it. Because they already got... They just drafted Michael Mayer in the first round last year. No, it was the second round. I was second up. round, okay. It was second round. So they did have a lot of holes on that team. Like, uh, they yeah. talked about it. But, like, they grabbed best available when they had holes. But it's like, you kind of look at the holes on the team like this. Like, for example, I'm a Browns fan. Every year we draft, there's a lot of holes on the team. So sometimes you look at, do you take best available? Or if if you draft one of those holes, do you think it makes a significant difference? That's like how you got to look at it, I guess. Like, So you get Gardner Minshew a little bit more time to throw the ball and draft the lineman, or you get him a good target that he can get the ball to quick at least. It, it's like, you know what I mean? Because like some people thought the Chargers would take a receiver. Rather than the lineman. It's almost like you have to change your whole offense at that point. Oh, for you sure. You want to cater your whole offense to drafting a new tight end or draft somebody else. That's probably just as good. Yeah. Not at that position, but like just as good of a pick, you know? Right. So for second worst pick, can I uh, just throw something in there that wasn't a pick? It sure. wasn't a player getting drafted. It was, was the it Bills Buffalo trading. trading I knew it. with Kansas City to give them the fastest yeah, receiver in combine history. Terrible. And then trading out of the first round entirely with the Panthers. They traded with the Chiefs down to 32 and then traded with the Panthers back to 33. So they did not make a day one pick. So, okay. I do have a problem with it and I don't. If Keon Coleman was your guy the entire time, you realize he wasn't going to go. You trade back. No need to jump and grab him six, seven picks sooner. But on the other hand, if I'm the Browns, I know the Chiefs and the Bills are not division like rivals. They're not in the same division. They just meet up in AFC Championship a lot of times. But if I'm the Browns, I'm not pick swapping with the Steelers. I'm not pick swapping with anybody who is going to directly affect my season. Yeah. So you look at the team who you cannot beat in the playoffs. 
and you gift wrap them the fastest receiver in history, fastest player in history. What? Why? Why? Like, I didn't get that one either. Like, I wouldn't trade with the Chiefs. I would have traded with the Panthers. Fine, sure. I feel like when a team wins the Super Bowl, everybody in the draft should just be like, yeah, we're not just going to let you pick you. earlier. Like, we're screwing you. You yeah. won. You get the 30-second pick. Like, <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. That's trash that the Bills were like, hey, yeah, you can have this pick. You know, they, they like did, watching they did the confetti with, fall, uh, bro. Right, they like oh. watching the confetti fall. They did fall that with Pat Mahomes, I'm pretty sure, too. I think the Bills – uh and the Chiefs, I believe I could be wrong. It was with another big player, but the Bills and the Chiefs traded, and the Chiefs got, like, I don't know if it was Pat Mahomes or another guy, but maybe, I think it was Pat Mahomes. I, I have one draft day question for you guys. This is the TikTok question. What rece- uh, receiver, let's start that over, rewind. What quarterback do you think is walking in to the best situation? Caleb Williams. Or J.J. McCarthy. Now, let's note real quick. Offensively, Caleb Williams has DeAndre Swift, Roma Dunze, Keenan Allen, D.J. Moore. On the other hand, and Cole Komet, yes. Cole Komet, thank you. And J.J. McCarthy has Jordan Addison, Justin Jefferson, T.J. Hawkinson, Aaron Jones, I don't think their third receiver matters. Who is their third receiver? I'm trying to think, was there anybody else going off when Justin Jefferson got hurt? Oh, there was. K.J. Osborne? Yeah. Is that him? Yeah. I actually do like their uh, their second running back, though. Um, what's oh, his he's last nice, name? bro. Uh, is it Chandler? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Something Chandler? Yeah, I like him Tyson a lot. Chandler? It ain't Tyson Chandler, <laughs> man. But I do like him. So with those names... Jordan, I'll let you go first. What quarterback do you think is stepping into the best possible situation for him? It's Just Ty. offensively. It's Ty. You think it's a tie? It is. Oh, it's Ty Chandler. Oh, yeah. my God. Okay, never mind. Oh, I thought you said it, was, it is a tie. Yeah. I was about to say, okay, Ty that's Chandler. possible. Uh, they right got Brandon now, Powell and did Nikhil yep. Harry. Yep, those are the wide receiver three and four. Um, I think it's close. The Very reason close. that I'm going to give it to Caleb Williams is the Bears made all of these moves for him. Mm -hmm. They knew they had the first overall pick. They knew they were getting Caleb Williams. So they went out and they built a team for him. The Vikings had this team. I mean, they got Aaron Aaron Jones, but everybody else they had, like it was just kind of like, yeah, we just need to replace uh, Kirk. Whereas the Bears were like, okay, we got DJ Moore for Justin two years ago, or last year, whenever that was. Last year. But... Let's go get Keenan. Let's go get DeAndre Swift. You know, let's build a team around. Let's draft Roma Dunze. Let's kind of build a team for him to succeed. So I think it's close, but I think uh, Caleb Williams by just a little bit. Okay. What about you, Matt? Uh, it's definitely the Vikings. You get, like, jo- Jordan just reverse pointed out my point. Okay. They already have a team together that's cohesive yes okay they already know what they're doing they know the offense the quarterback comes in learns the offense yeah. we're already on the ground rolling and you have a an offensive head coach in kevin o'connell mm-hmm. who is going to cater to you he made kirk cousins look like a god yeah mvp candidate you know what i'm saying yeah. so he's going to cater to you with all of these weapons with the best receiver in football like I, it's easy walk at you the bears Dude, the Bears are the Bears. You know what I'm saying? They are. Matt Eberflus. Still there. Nameless gray face. Matt Chill. Eberflus. Yeah, still there. Can't believe it. Yeah, I know. And then a whole new regime of players that you're going to have to try to get to buy into your shit system. But the <laughs> Bears have a better defense, too, by far. I was just talking offensively. Just talking offensively. I don't want to get into the defense because I know that's a better team. But I was just talking about who he has to deal yeah. with personally, like his guys that he can get the ball to. All right. Real quick, Matt, I got to reverse. What's your answer? Oh, I think it's uh, I think it's equal. Equal? So I think it's, it's equal. just a tie. Oh, okay. I think it's a tie. Break room <laughs> yeah, it's a tie. I think yeah, I'm going both sides here. Yeah, there's no wrong answer. <laughs> I think they're both uh, 
I think they're both set up for success. And I don't know if I've ever seen a, <laughs> another another quarterback walk into a better situation that I can think of. I mean, yeah. Brock Purdy. I mean, Sam Darnold might go off. <laughs> they, so right now in the depth chart. I was about to chart, say, did you even catch that? In the depth chart, Sam Darnold is listed as the starter in JJ's. The he backup, has to be. But he's going to He'll be uh, Darnold he'll for that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I did see his ghost. Matt, I want to ask you a question because we talked about this prior to you getting here, but this is a – TikTok purpose question. Um, so uh, there is a potential chance LeBron could opt out of his contract and leave the Lakers this season. We don't yeah. know if it's going to happen or not, whatever. Um, so I'm going to give you year by year what happened during his tenure, and I want you to give it a grade, okay? A through F on how you think his tenure went. 2019, they missed the playoffs. He got hurt and I think missed 30 games or 20 games, something like that. 2020, the bubble championship, a.k.a. the Mickey Mouse ring. 2021, they got knocked out in the first round by, I believe it was the Suns. We never fact-checked that, but I think it was the Suns. Um, 2022, they missed the playoffs that year. Wasn't Chris Paul, like, talking shit? That was, yeah, I think that was the Chris Paul. Yeah. Year. Yeah. Um, 2023, they made it to the Western Conference Finals after beating the Grizzlies and beating the Warriors, but they got swept in the, con- the Western Conference Finals by Denver. This year, gentlemen sweep again to the Denver Nuggets. So... With all of that information, what are you giving them A through – well, LeBron's tenure, A through F. Not him personally, just his, – Oh, his tenure or the league? His the, – The whole the time Lakers he's been there. The team with his tenure. Under LeBron, okay. yes. With LeBron. Yes. What grade are you giving the tenure of LeBron James with the Los Angeles Lakers? Uh, I feel like you got to go like C. It's just like meh. You know what I mean? They got the one – If they did the one ring, I feel like it was – if they didn't get that one ring, it would be, it would be bad. Two playoff appearances. Yeah, it'd be enough. Right. So I mean, they would have three because they would have made three, it. Oh well, yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. Would I'd have been be would have been three. But like when you have the expectations of LeBron James and Anthony Davis coming to your team, that should be playoffs every year mm-hmm. and at least, at, at least second round. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like this is a dude that went to ten straight Eastern Conference Finals. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 10 straight finals. Yeah. yeah. And so you go to the Lakers and now miss the playoffs the first. I mean, yeah, I got to go see. It's just. That's yeah. okay. I, I, I just feel like that it would be like that with anybody. If you have two superstars coming to your team, and especially one is at the time he got there was currently the best player in the world. Right. Yeah. You got to assume that you're going to go to the finals at least. Four times. Yeah, no, I agree. With you. you know what I mean. So yeah. I gave I it a B say minus. Like a C. I'm not far. I, from yeah, I gave it a C minus. He gave it a C. So. I gave it a B minus only because I researched it, so I know some of the nuances to like the year they missed the playoffs. Anthony Davis missed a ton of games, so with him and just some guys. Yeah, when you get and, Anthony Davis, you got to expect him to miss a couple, a bunch of games. I mean, but recently AD's played a lot. Yeah, yeah. recently. But um, okay, Matt. So then that leads me to my last question, real quick. If you are, put yourself. In the mind that you are a Los Angeles Lakers fan. This is your team. You have been a fan. Take your hatred for LeBron James away. Because I had to take my fandom away. Okay. Take your hatred for him away. If you are a Lakers fan today, season ended yesterday, do you want LeBron James back on your roster next season if you are a Lakers fan? No, man. I can't wait to get my team back. <laughs> <laughs> then they went 19 games after they said that. <laughs> Can't wait to have my fucking team back. I think they won 19 games after that, but I said no too. I uh, said I'm gonna no. be honest. Yeah, it, like on a real note, uh, no, I said the same. I, and it's not. It don't have anything to do with that. I feel like. I just feel like it's. Uh, they tried like a kind of like a trial on error type of thing. They got a bunch of new guys in there this mm-hmm. past year. I mean, Most clearly it didn't work. This guy yeah. here. Yeah, I mean it didn't work. You get rid of him, and I think you just. But here's the thing. A rebuild for the Lakers and a rebuild for the Charlotte Hornets are two different things. Yeah, because they can A get rebuild people. for the Lakers is a big market that you're going to attract some big names. Mm-hmm. You just got to get a better coach. You're, you can get a new coach in there, and you can get some good guys to come in there and have a great season. Rumor has it they're already looking I don't at their know, next coach. I don't know who's going to be a free agent off the top of my head. Right. But I guarantee there's going to be some big names, and they could land at least one or two. So uh, along with Anthony Davis, and then LeBron goes and has some fun with his son. So I said move AD too, but um. Well, yeah, you could you could completely rebuild. Yeah, yeah for I'm sure. rebuilding. I'm gutting everything for um, sure. 
but I'm going to break the news here first. The Los Angeles Lakers head coach next season will be not the diet version of himself that they uh, got with this guy, Darvin Ham, but the guy that he worked for, Mike Budenholzer. Calling it now, just so you guys know. Jordan, is there anything else you want to add before we get out of here, buddy? It's like we did good enough. No, I just want to uh, I want to apologize to Derek. We did not get to play your game. Um, he, did he send it? Yeah. Oh, because Matt did get here. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Derek. I tried to get him to hurry up. I texted him and, uh, you know. Let's try to play it at the shop. It's 11 13. So it's okay. I got a TikTok for uh, us at the it's, shop. It's not a, a shoppable game. Why not? It's a long game. Oh. All right. I'm going to say we could set the camera up on a tripod. <laughs> we'll yeah. try. In the back we'll, room. Hey. We'll figure it I out. I got a TikTok for us today, so don't worry about it. Hey, guys. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Barbershop Break Room. Feel free to like, subscribe. Hey, share with a friend. <laughs> You know what I mean? Send a video to one of your buddies. Like, you see what these fools are saying? One these your, guys know ball. One of your these buds. idiots. And just remember one thing. We know more than you about sports. I KBN, baby. In. I KBN. Let's go.